to bring us home and maybe answer some of those questions, artist Trevor Paglin. Yeah, my talk's not called that anymore. It actually doesn't even have a title. Um, I wanted to talk today about the pressing problem of Soviet socialist realist painting. <laughs> That's really important. Um, because the thing with this kind of painting is that there's a kind of common sense built into these kinds of representations. There's a kind of underlying philosophy of transparency, of a more or less uh, causal relationship between representations and things. The theory here is that representations are simple things and then artwork should reflect that simplicity. And this is a kind of aesthetic regime that I think we're seeing a kind of strong reemergence of at the moment, actually with this sort of thing. Now, obviously, one of the major kind of a big application of AI is being able to analyze images. Um, and this is what that sort of thing looks like, a green jacket, a white horse, a man on a horse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is kind of thing is evolving pretty quickly, the ability to kind of um, interpret images. Uh, where's my next slide? There it is. Okay, here we are. Um, this is evolving quickly in where newer systems are trying to not only recognize objects in, in scenes and in images, but being able to associate them with metadata and like meta metadata, if we will. You know, in other words, look at a meal and not only know what that meal is, but how many calories are in it. Look at a picture of a person and be able to estimate, you know, how what's their body fat uh, percentage, this sort of thing. And so there's a kind of aesthetic genre going on here that in some ways echoes socialist realism, but I, we can call it, I will dub it to today, autonomous, hypernormal, mega meta realism. <laughs> um, so and, we've had, and it does echo this kind of socialist realism kind of stuff, but here's the problem. Socialist realism fucking sucks. It really sucks. It's a really limited aesthetic and conceptual palette. And this is a feature of the genre. This is not a bug. And the reason for that is socialist realism is designed to make certain styles of thinking impossible. It's a means of centralizing power. It's a means of creating literally a kind of aesthetics of totalitarianism. So when we look back at this autonomous, hyper, neoliberal, mega materialism, whatever, um, it has a lot in common with that. But I think it's potentially actually a lot more insidious for a lot of reasons for that. Um, part of it is because this kind of, um, it involves the autonomous attribution of meanings in the service of capital, right? It's a kind of hyper-realism that's designed to see and to only be able to see aspects of images that can be turned into capital. And what's more, it operationalizes those meanings. You know, at the, at the most benign version of that, you know, um, your pictures might be used to try to sell you stuff. But... It can also uh, be, the, your pictures can be, uh, have enormous consequences for your ability to get a job, uh, get credit, be able to get insurance, and so on and so forth. And in this kind of autonomous realism, as many other people have pointed out, he who controls the training sets controls the meanings of images. And we have no or very few ways of trying to contest the meaning of those images. And this, of course, represents an enormous centralization of power. And what's more, this happens invisibly, done by proprietary systems that produce proprietary meanings in ways and places that are actually totally opaque to us. And this is one of the weirder aspects of this emerging art genre, if we want to call it that, that it's a visual system that lives alongside us and it makes persistent and kind of molecular interventions into our lives, but at the same time is largely invisible to us. This is a part of a very famous genre of images that Marguerite made that he called the treachery of images. And the point of these paintings is to kind of show a tension between a kind of unexamined common sense that says this is an apple and the actual frangibility of meanings themselves. And I think this is not a semiotic stunt. This is a really important thing because the freedom to say this is not an apple 
is the same kind of freedom to say, I am a man, or I am a woman, or I am neither a man nor a woman, but I am a person. It's the freedom to say, I'm a Palestinian. It's the freedom to say, black lives matter, to say, I am beautiful. And it's most basic, it's the freedom of self-representation that goes hand in hand with self-determination. And this is one of the many, many reasons why this advent of autonomous hyper-neoliberal meta-mega-realism scares me so much. It's the fear that it robs us of our ability to determine ourselves by robbing us of the ability to define and the meanings of images for ourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trevor. And there may be some questions, so if you just want to take a seat.